Hey guys, this is Torrance. Today we're going to be talking about Miram. I wanted to specifically talk about Miram to do with the Roaming Throne. The Roaming Throne is the new card coming out in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan that looks bonkers crazy in basically any tribal deck. However, I think that in the Miram deck, it is going to be insane. There are so many ways for you to be able to proc it and just deal an insane amount of damage or buff up your character, like your, your um, dragons, a whole bunch. Just be able to completely like, you know, wipe the floor with anyone that is around. So Miram, if you don't know, is a flying ward dragon spirit. Uh, whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you're going to create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't a legendary if they are a legendary. So that's basically going to be able to bypass any of the restrictions to do with having multiple legendary characters or anything. However, the ones that I'm going to talk about in this video, the one that I'm going to talk about in this video, it doesn't matter because he's not a legendary anyway. So you're not going to have to kind of worry about that. However, you know, being able to proc this and be able to create a token of any other dragon is already a crazy great ability. I'm already using it. Uh, my friends absolutely hate it. Depending on what I pull, I can get some crazy stuff kind of going. So making sure that you have that is going to be great. So the important things that we want to keep in mind here is this Ward 2. That's important to know. And then this part here, the when ever another non-token dragon enters. So this is a triggered ability. And so is Ward, if you did not know. Ward is a triggered ability, which means that when we have the Roaming Throne, uh, when the Roaming Throne enters the battlefield, you can choose a creature type. And the Roaming Throne is that chosen type in addition to its other types. Now, I know what you're probably thinking with the Miram deck. You probably want to choose Naga or Snake or something like that. Now, obviously you want to choose dragon. So this roaming throne is going to shapeshift itself into a dragon prior to entering the battlefield or as it's entering the battlefield. So it's going to also have ward two, which is really great to kind of keep in mind. And it has the ability that if a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type, so dragon, any dragons, their triggered abilities are going to proc an additional time. So Again, with Miram, that means that this part here, the whenever another to non-token dragon enters the battlefield is going to proc an additional time. The ward is going to proc an additional time as well. So when our roaming throne enters the battlefield, we are going to have Miram up here. Miram is going, so the roaming throne, this is our original roaming throne. Miram is going to see that. He's going to be like, okay, I'm going to create a copy of that for the roaming throne. However, then the Miram is then going to also be procced an additional time because of the roaming throne that's out here, thus creating three roaming thrones for us. So we're going to have Miram here, and then we've got three roaming thrones out on the field. This is crazy because it can do crazy things. Like, for example, our Miram is going to have Ward 8. Because of him having Ward 2, then each of these making that Ward 2 proc an additional time, that's going to be Ward 8 in total. Each of our Roaming Thrones is going to thus see its additional partners, which are also dragons, and they are also going to have this making them additional time proc. So they're going to have ward six each. So each of our dragons, uh, roaming thrones having ward six each, our Miram having ward eight, it means that they're going to be immune to a bunch of, or well, not immune, they're going to be incredibly hard to remove unless someone has a board wipe of some kind. The other thing to keep in mind is Miram is tanky. He's a 6-6, which is something that my friends keep reminding me about because of the fact that a lot of like, you know, removal and stuff like that, there's like, you know, four damage and stuff. They're going to be, he's going to be immune to that. Um, so it's going to take a little bit for them to get him out of the battlefield unless they've got like, you know, swords of plowshares straight off the bat before you get these roaming thrones out. So once you get the roaming thrones out, he's going to then do some even crazier stuff. So... Let's have a look at this red dragon. So this red dragon is going to cost us four and two, two, uh, two reds. Uh, he's going to have flying. And then when he enters the battleground, uh, battlefield, he's going to deal four damage to each opponent. So each opponent, keep in mind. So each person is going to thus take four damage when these red dragons come in. So from there, look at this. <laughs> We've got Miram. Our original red dragon, our original red dragon comes in, Miram creates a copy. Then each of our roaming thrones is thus going to create another copy. So now we've got, 
you know, mirror metal on the field. We've got three roaming thrones out of the field. We've got five dragons, five red dragons out. So for a start, you know, the red dragons are decent, you know, they're four fours. Um, but that's not even why we really want them out there. That's not why I'm choosing red dragon or anything. It's because of that enters the battlefield. So each of these, when they enter the battlefield, are thus going to be able to use their ability. So we've got red dragon entering the battlefield. Again, it says when he enters the battlefield, a triggered ability. So he's going to enter the battlefield, deal his four damage to each opponent. Then each of the roaming thrones is going to be like, oh, hey, trigger that an additional time, trigger additional time, trigger additional time. So it's going to deal 16 damage each to each opponent from just these. That's one red dragon. So thus, if we take, you know, our five red dragons, they're going to deal 80 damage to each opponent. This is really, really crazy. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm overestimating it or something like that, but it's a really cool combo. Um, I absolutely love my Miram deck. I think Miram plus Roaming Throne is going to find a lot of love because there's a lot of different like triggers and stuff like that that you can get to go additional times. Just, you know, just just purely from there to those two cards, like having and having the additional Roaming Thrones that are going to be coming out is going to be really crazy. So... Some other choices that you've got here, you've got like Scourge of Valkus, which is whenever him or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it's going to deal damage equal to the number of dragons. So keep in mind that just the first one of these coming out is going to deal, you know, you've got the four dragons that are already there. So five dragons with him, then it's going to deal that five times times the other three roaming thrones as well. And then, you know, you've got the other four Scourge of Velkus that are going to come out. You've got a lot of damage that you can thus spread around across the whole board. You've got Thrakus the Butcher here. Whenever Thrakus the Butcher attacks, double the power of each dragon you control. So you're going to be doubling it five times. Doubling the power. You obviously want, you know, something with haste. Otherwise you are susceptible for someone coming in and board wiping you prior to you getting your next turn. However, you know, Five Thrakuses doubling the power over and over again. Um, sorry, I say five times, but it's not going to be five times. It's going to be five times, times, you know, the additional three extra triggers from the, um, from the roaming battle, uh, for that, the roaming thrones. So, you know, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> it's, it's going to be a lot of time. It's going to be 15 times, I believe. Uh, maybe I'm doing the math wrong there. Someone, le someone let me know down in the comments if I'm doing the math wrong there. Now, the other one, my, one of my personal favorite cards, Terror of the Peaks. So whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks is going to deal damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So he's going to enter. He's going to deal, you know, five damage times the three additional um, roaming thrones. Then the next one, next Terror of the Peaks is going to enter and deal the three. And then you've got, you know, it's just going to keep going, you know. It's going to, it's crazy. Um, I am, I am really, really interested in this card. I'm really happy about it. I'm going to be very excited to chuck this into my Miram deck. And even if you, you know, even if you don't have Miram up on the field at the time, even if I don't have Miram up on the time and I've just got the roaming thrown out, it's going to be an additional kind of win con here because, you know, even this proccing Thrakus an additional time, depending on what dragons you've got out there, you know, Thrakus is going to double up to six and then double up to 12. Um, you know, you've got, you know, a whole lot of other big dragons that are going to be able to do additional stuff. I am really, really excited about this. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I hope you guys had a great day and goodbye.